Good morning, and welcome to Hillcrest Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today is Sunday, July 5th, my wife's birthday, and the Sunday of July 4th weekend, and it is the first Sunday of the month, so therefore a communion Sunday for us at Hillcrest. Our summer worship theme is Beguiled by Beauty. And our theme for today is Awakening to Beauty, Falling in Love with the World. I urge you to take in all this worship service has to offer in meditation and music, prayer and singing, and in the lessons and reflection. I also urge those who are worshiping on Sunday morning, July 5th, to join us for the brief service of Holy Communion. We will meet on our Zoom platform at 11 a.m., As part of our service right now, we will include a time for confession and absolution. Now we will hear the news of community and then prepare ourselves for worship. Greetings. I'm Bill Cunningham, and I'll be your liturgist for this July 5th worship service. Welcome to you all. I hope you'll join in the virtual fellowship hour this Sunday at 11 a.m. As this is Communion Sunday, Reverend Fred will lead us in communion. Please have your bread and cup ready. You can participate using your telephone, computer, tablet, or smartphone. Instructions on how to join in the conversation were emailed by Reverend Fred on Saturday, July the 4th. Sunday school will take place again this Sunday afternoon. If your child hasn't yet participated, contact Allison Keekley Silva for further information. Zoom links are emailed weekly to the families. Last week, over 25 adult ed participants explored the topic of white privilege or white advantage. It was intriguing to look back at our own upbringing and learn about each other's life experiences through the lens offered in the reading material. Even if you had to miss last week's session, we hope you'll join in next Wednesday, July the 8th at 4 p.m. Reverend Fred will send information about how to join through Zoom early next week. If you have not been receiving Hillcrest eBlast or have any particular questions about adult ed, please contact Reverend Fred. The Hillcrest Community Food Pantry is on track to reopen on Monday, July 6th. Protocols for the protection of volunteers and clients have been developed, reviewed, and approved by the Hillcrest leadership. Training on the protocols will be provided to each volunteer before they start their work. Thanks to the many volunteers, the food room's regular schedule of Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 to 11.45 will be maintained. However, volunteers are always needed. If you would like to volunteer, please contact Office Manager Carolyn Mueller-Reese. The Hillcrest office is now open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 to noon. If you need or want to come by the office for any reason, we strongly urge you to make an appointment with the office ahead of time. Safety protocols will need to be followed for the protection of yourself and others. Please see the written news of the community emailed to you yesterday by Reverend Fred, which had more details about safety protocols and for information on how to contact Carolyn Mueller-Reese, Allison Keekley-Silva, or Reverend Fred. And now... Let us quiet ourselves and prepare for worship.
The simple and often sad truth is that we too often try to satisfy our thirst for meaningful life with distractions, even addictions. Awakening to beauty is to see and experience the world with God's eyes, with God's spirit. That's how our own soul's thirst for life is quenched. The resilience and beauty of the natural world is ever a sign of hope. A tree is scorched by fire and yet new shoots sprout up, defiantly, optimistically reaching toward the sun. A crack in the sidewalk reveals, even provides for, new shoots to break through. Contemplating this resilient beauty awakens us to our own vitality and to the promise that we too are capable of new life. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn for every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity. In our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity. In our death a resurrection, at the last a victory. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. You are now invited to a moment of quiet rest, a time of slowing the pace of your body and mind so that the spirit can settle. The chimes will call us to prayerful meditation. Divine goodness, Holy Spirit, Pause us for this moment. Bear us up in this time. Hold us for eternity. We embrace the brokenness of our lives. We believe you are creating new light that will shine through. We open to your possibilities. We use this silence to draw close to you. We begin the prayers of the people on this July 4th weekend and Communion Sunday with a prayer of confession and absolution. Please join me. I will make several brief prayers of confession, bringing each to a close with God in your mercy. And then we are all invited to speak, forgive and transform. These words of confession aren't easy. They're not meant to be. As our Christian spirituality shows us, it is through the cracks and the recognition and awareness, even ownership, of our cracks and imperfections 
that the light of God's grace-filled, forgiving, and life-giving spirit shines through. And so we confess on this July 4th weekend and on this Communion Sunday for all the ways we knowingly or unknowingly oppress and harm others, God, in your mercy, forgive and transform. For all the ways we squander right relationship, God, in your mercy, forgive and transform. For all the ways we abuse our freedom, engaging in hateful speech and actions that injure and demean, God, in your mercy, forgive and transform. For all the ways we deny equality, justice, even humanity, God, in your mercy, forgive and transform. For all the ways we convince ourselves how hard, even impossible, it is to change our ways, our systems, our lifestyles, and so hold ourselves and others back from right relationship with the whole of creation and with you, God, in your mercy, forgive and transform. Let us each keep a brief time of silence before our God of love and transformation. Beloved of Christ, if it is your blinders that imprison you in ignorance, be free in Christ. If it is your sense of entitlement that has you stuck, be free in Christ. If it is the demeaning labels and put-downs of others that you have taken on yourself, be free in Christ. If it is your fear of losing yourself that immobilizes you, be free in Christ. No matter what binds you this day, freedom is yours. Through new life in Christ, live free. Live without excuses. Live without fear. For all are one and all are whole in Jesus Christ. And let everybody say, Amen. When you're tired and feel you can't get through Uncertainty comes over you Just look around When your problems seem too much to bear Unsure if there's someone who cares Just look around Where the stranger neighbor family friend on each other in tough times we can depend look around kindness love is ours to share we can see it everywhere though it may seem like forever look around even in our darkest night things are gone And now, as God's forgiven together, free and forgiven for new life, we pray. We thank you, our God, for our faith community, Hillcrest, and for all the ways you inspire us to live out your call to life and life abundant. We thank you, O oh God, that you bring healing to all circumstances for the sake of life, and we ask you to heal our nation at this time. Heal us from the ignorance, denial, and fear that so affect our dealings with the COVID pandemic, and heal us from the ignorance, denial, and fear that work together to maintain the racist pandemic and the violence pandemic that bedevil our land. We ask, O oh God, for healing and strength for all those in our Hillcrest family and all who are sick or recovering from illness and injury, including Ariana, Betty, Ron, 
web, and all we name in our hearts now. We ask you to bring healing and peace to all who are grieving and feeling loss of any kind, including the Jonke family, our own church family, and all who mourn the loss of our dear brother Martin, whose life we celebrate this coming Saturday, July 11th, as we gather together on our Zoom platform. For all the joys that are ours in you, for all the challenges that make us grow, we thank you, O God. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit who prays in us and through us and along with us now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Sometimes it can be hard to see Life is full of possibilities So look around Each and every day is such a gift Embrace it and the life you live And look around Outstretch arms and many hands hands don't give up on all your dreams and all your plans look around kindness love is ours to share we can see it everywhere though it may seem like forever look around for even in our darkest night things are gone Just look around. This summer, we've been talking about how beautiful the world is and the different ways we can find beauty around us. We talked about watering plants. We talked about wrapping ourselves in a warm blanket. And today, we're going to talk about finding beauty in broken things. Can broken things be beautiful? What I'd like you to do right now is take a look around. See if you find something broken, something damaged, something that needs repair. You can pause the video right now if you want to take some time to find it. Have you got it? Great. I'm going to teach you a word today. It's a Japanese word, wabi-sabi. Not wasabi, wabi-sabi. And what it means is that everything is beautiful, even things that are imperfect, things that might have been broken or made in an unusual way. In fact, this Japanese idea says that imperfection or out of the ordinary makes things more interesting and special. There's another art in Japan of repairing broken things with gold. Instead of gluing a vase back together so that you could never tell that it was broken, instead you'd use gold so you can see where the cracks were. Look at the object that you found. Can you think of a way to repair it that would make it even more beautiful? That would highlight and beautify the ways in which it's broken? We can talk about it in Sunday School. Hope to see you there. With each week's message, we will find a way to integrate contemplative practices into our daily lives as a way of opening to the divine in deeper ways, thereby training our spirits for compassion in all things. This week's ritual action, which I would like all of you to join me in, yes, even the adults, suggests that we might start a journal 
journaling our healing process? Is there something that's troubling us? Something that we're working on? Or it could be a contemplative moment of fixing something you've been putting off for a time. Does something need some super glue or spackling or mending? If so, do this with a prayerful intention. You may want to put a note somewhere in a highly visible place saying, find beauty within the imperfections of life and accept peacefully the natural cycle of growth and decay. Be reminded to offer grace for imperfections for the beauty of the earth. As we have been doing throughout this series, we will approach our lessons in the spiritual tradition of Lectio Divina, the ancient Christian practice of contemplating the sacred text. Psalm 147 has been beloved by the people of God for centuries and millennia. Imagine these words written for and spoken by the exiles who find themselves in need of an encouraging world. In the psalm, the Divine One, Yahweh, is the source of restoration who binds wounds and brings sustenance and life to all, especially to those who are suffering. Many of us today feel exiled from what is familiar and for beloved people and places and gatherings. I invite you to breathe in, drink in these hopeful, wonderful words. Psalm 147. Our second lesson is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 48. As prophets do, Isaiah is speaking for God in the voice of God. Notice how these words seem also to channel the psalm that we have just heard, and how they seem to channel familiar words of Jesus. Hear now the voice of God through the prophet Isaiah. You have heard, now see, all this... And will you not declare it? From this time forward, I will make you hear new things, hidden things that you have not known. They are created now, not long ago. Before today, you've never heard of them, so that you could not say, I already knew them. You have never heard. You have never known. From of old, your ear has not been opened. And this is the good news of God. Amen. Something beautiful, something good, all my confusion, God understood. We've talked about cracks, we've talked about imperfections, we've talked about God's light shining through, and we've talked about new shoots and new life reaching out from stumps and concrete and stretching up toward the sky. And we haven't even gotten to these readings yet. 
I want to begin at the end, at the end of our first reading from this great Psalm 47. Yahweh delights. Well, what or who is Yahweh? Anybody have an answer to that? Perhaps the best person to answer that question, at least in terms of a definition, is the spinach-eating sailor of the high seas, Popeye. I am what I am is about the best definition of Yahweh that there is. And if you don't get the Popeye reference, Google it. That's P-O-P-E-Y-E. And if you still don't get what Yahweh means, that's okay. Because in the wisdom of the Bible, and in that great discussion between Yahweh and Yahweh's first prophet, Moses, Exodus 3, by the way, if you're keeping score, in that discussion, it isn't at all clear that we're supposed to get what Yahweh means. How could you, how can you name, define, label God? Recall, Moses asked God to name God's self, to label God's self. But to label something is to define. It's to make it finite, understandable. God's answer? It's not understandable. It's a mystery. Likely, that's just the point. Not to end the conversation, but to be the beginning of the conversation. Far better than fussing over what Yahweh actually means or how to define it linguistically is to see how God is described and how God describes God's self. I hear the cries of my people. Those are the first words that God speaks to God's first prophet Moses. I hear the cries of my people. And what is the very first description, depiction, explanation of God's emotion or assessment or judgment that we get in the Bible? God saw that it, we, us, the whole of creation, was good. And on that score, how does God emote in the great creation story found right about exactly in the middle of most Bibles in Proverbs chapter 8? How does God react to us. It says that God delights in the whole human race. And that's exactly what our great Psalm 47, our first reading, is picking up on. God, our living God, our creator God, delights. From the last line of the psalm, Yahweh delights. Yahweh delights in those who worship with reverence and put their hope in divine love. Of course, Yahweh does. It's what God does. It's plain for all to see and hear. And yet, religious people seem to miss it. Too often. So often. Now, from the end of the psalm to the beginning, how good it is to praise our God. It is a pleasure to make beautiful praise. Of course it is. God creates, God delights. We should too. How does the old pop song go? And that's why birds do it, bees do it, even educated fleas do it. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. Well, I don't know about educated fleas, all kudos to the great Cole Porter, but I think the psalmist is even a little more poetic and just as attuned to God's great creation all around us. It is good to praise our God. What a pleasure to make beautiful praise. Elsewhere, the psalmist talks about mountains singing and rushing waters clapping their hands. Here we get ravens crying and God sending the rains and the new growth and all that reflects God's life-giving goodness. Of course it's good to make beautiful praise. Our very good and very delightful experience is itself praise of God's glory. 
So why don't we more often make beautiful praise, love more and more fully, delight more and more fully? Our whole summer worship theme is beguiled by beauty, taken in by beauty. And our theme for today is awakening to beauty, falling in love with the world. God is, God does all those things, beguiled by beauty. How do I know that? God says so repeatedly. God delights in us. Us. It's about time we make like our Creator God and do the same. And it's about time we recognize that creation isn't something that just happened way back. It's ongoing, as is God's delight, as is God's seeing that it is good. And that's where our reading from Isaiah kicks in, as a vital, important, and beautiful reminder. God tells us through the prophet, I am still creating. I never stopped. I am creating now, not long ago. Before today, God goes on, You've never heard of these new creations I'm about to do. Wow. Just stop right there, right? If you think you know all that there is to know about God and God's creation in the Bible, have you read this text? How could you know all there is to know? God is still creating. And God, God's self, says, You've never heard, you can't yet have heard about what I'm creating anew. Open your ears, open your eyes, God goes on in this great chapter 48 of Isaiah. Jesus uses the exact same language in so many of his teachings. Because God is ever creating all things new for us, even through us. If we would but hear and would but see with God's eyes and God's ears, which have little, if anything, to do with physical sight and aural capacity, rather, it has all to do with soul and heart and relationship to one's own self, to others, to the world, and, of course, to our living, loving, transforming, creating God, To be open to God, God's life-giving and grace-filled spirit, and to be open to the beauty in yourself and the beauty in others, including those who don't look like you or identify like you, perhaps especially in those who don't look like you or identify like you. To be open to God's ongoing creation. That's what life is all about. So says our psalm for today. So says the prophet Isaiah. So says Jesus, so says God. And let all of God's beguiled lovers say, Amen. Amen. Come, O God of all the earth, come to us, O righteous one. Come and bring your love to birth in the glory of your son sing out of the skies sing on the sky he loves you lose your dreadful cries dance to the life around you come O God of snow and rain shower down
As the song says, we'll get through this together with outstretched arms and many helping hands. Our offerings are part of the way we can bind up the broken and affirm the worth of all. It is in this spirit that we offer our gifts. Please continue to give by sending in pledges or offering through the mail or giving online at hillcrestucc.org. Your gifts help to continue the vital work of our ministries to care for each other, our community, and the world. And please remember to take care of yourselves and each other. We are church together. We give together as we support one another and support the work of our church. Let us pray. Creator God, draw close to our hearts. Help see through eyes of hope when we see brokenness in the world, in others, in ourselves. Help us find the resilience to not resist the wind, but to allow it to flow through us, to move us, to become part of us. Help us to know that the quiet always comes no matter what the storm. Help us to sway with the wind and stay for the quiet. Bless our gifts that they may help others. Know that they are held in your loving light. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Now let us receive the blessing. The world is so varied and beautiful. Seek wisdom wherever it is to be found. And may the creative goodness of our Father and Mother and listening God, the creative companionship of the Christ, and the creative insight of the Holy Spirit infuse your life now and always. Amen. As we pass the peace, I invite you to plant your feet on God's good earth if you're outside or firmly on the floor where you are 
And as you look around and look up at whatever you can see or imagine of what God has created and is creating, look out. And if you'd like, reach out to all those beautiful and delightful people you know and don't know. And even the ones you may not in the moment consider so delightful. Perhaps they or you need this most. And now offer from your heart this gift. The peace, the wholeness, the beauty of Christ be with you. And reply with me and also with you. Amen. Our service has ended. For those of you worshiping on Sunday morning, July 5th, 2020, know that we will be gathering at 11 a.m. for a brief service of Holy Communion, followed by a time of fellowship. The information to join that meeting via Zoom has been circulated. If you have not received it or have questions about it, please email me now at revfred.hillcrest at att.net. Go in peace. Shelter in peace. Experience God's beauty in others, in yourself, in the world, in peace. Hope to see you soon. Amen.